Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless. Though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the Earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as Rock Shield of Carboniferous Age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel, an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint, a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western Mines history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine. Sometimes an artifact will be discovered which challenges our entire understandings of the world around us. We are confronted with things that, according to our worldview, shouldn't exist. And in 1991, researchers performing geomineralogical studies along several Russian rivers would make such a discovery. Known as the Ural Mountains, it is a notoriously strange, cold, and incredibly lonely slice of the Russian landscape. Accounts of snow yetis and terrifying creatures have plagued the mountain ranges for decades even including a reported attack by such a creature within Dyatlov Pass. The Ural Mountains is clearly one of the weirdest and most isolated places on Earth, and it seems it has also been the resting place for a series of several thousand tiny coil-shaped artifacts, ancient nanotechnology of an unknown and quite possibly alien origin. The larger artifacts made from copper, while the smaller ones from tungsten. What is clearly the most astonishing thing regarding these tiny ancient relics is their size, some of the exhibits being only 2.4 macrons long, or around one ten thousandth of an inch. Seeing as though the average human hair is about 100 microns, it's safe to assume that these microscopic objects were not constructed by our primitive ancestors. For to create such intriguing objects would have required a knowledge and an application of sophisticated nanotechnologies. Not only do they exhibit characteristics reminiscent of components used within our own modern nanotechnologies, the nanocoils also exhibit golden ratio proportions, 
a trait which could only be present if intelligently designed by mathematically wise beings. Some skeptics to their true history have predictably attempted to speculate that the apparently alien objects were simply fragments of debris from the nearby rocket test facility, but a report from the Moscow Institute of Technology concluded that their vast age was enough to dismiss this as a possibility. The conclusive figure acquired from this official dating put their initial creation to around 300,000 years ago. Studies performed by facilities in Helsinki, Moscow and St. Petersburg also backed up the claims that the coil-shaped objects were manufactured in the very distant past, stating that they predate modern history by some orders of magnitude. Unfortunately, as with so many items we cover, since the nanospirals principal investigator Dr. Johannes Fieback died in 1999, the research has been halted. What's more, predictably, the current whereabouts of all of these ancient nano-artifacts is unfortunately unknown. It's fair to say, however, that the Ural Mountains still possess some of these curious and very ancient objects, but judging by their size, they won't be very easy to find. Hey guys, so a few months back I shared with you the story of adventurous geologists who had trekked far into the cold wilderness of Russia in an effort to catalog the largest megalithic site on Earth. So remote, they are steeped in legends of snow yetis and mysterious monsters devouring all who dare to venture into these remote areas. When I shared the amazing images of these stone structures, many argued that they were natural formations maybe because they struggled to conceive such enormous ancient ruins in such remote places. Discoveries that seem to be many hundreds of thousands of years old. Maybe even as old as the giant sphinx. More and more is being learnt about them. With ever more daring explorations of the ruins being undertaken, a team discovered a vault in one of the stone megaliths. An access vault that led them into an artificially made stone cavern system. These underground structures are truly massive and are undoubtedly constructed by an intelligent builder. Hidden for many millennia, these caverns are not only massive but constructed using blocks placed upon one another that are over 50 feet in length in some instances, making these stones many thousands of tons in weight, seemingly placed effortlessly into the shape of underground walls. This discovery has not really shed light upon how the ancients built such structures but rather push their apparent capabilities farther from our understanding. Not only are these structures purpose of vast mystery, but they also contain place stones bigger than any we've ever discovered, even eclipsing the unfinished stone found at the ancient Chinese quarry known as Yangshan. A stone can be found here half cut away from the bedrock, in excess of 16,000 tons, thought by scholars throughout time to have been left at the quarry due to them not being able to move it. Yet, here we have stones placed into a cave system designed which even outweigh Yangshan. This not only proves they could move them, but lift them and work them. Just how many quote natural formations are really just extremely weathered, once extremely large stone built structures? Maybe there are many stone granite hills and even maybe mountains that dot our earth, which were before millennia of rain, grand structures of a forgotten people. 1973, Romania. Workers near the Mure River would uncover an aluminium artifact buried with the remains of two large prehistoric mastodons. In a place known as Aird, about 35 feet deep in the sand, a metal fragment was unearthed, a fragment that would subsequently be covered up by the Romanian government for over 30 years. Ira Kohal, the deputy director of the Romanian Ufologists Association, said, Laboratory tests originally concluded that it was most likely an old UFO fragment, given that the substances it comprised of cannot be combined with technologies available on Earth, even to this day. The artifact is now on display in the History Museum of Kuyanapoke, with a sign saying, Origin still unknown. The Archaeological Institute of Kuyanapoke, who examined it, found it to be made of an alloy of aluminum encased in a thin layer of oxide, composed of 12 different elements. It is 89% aluminum covered by a thick oxide layer. The thickness of this layer is said to be confirmation of the object's immense age. Many skeptics have attempted to explain the artifact away as an elaborate hoax, yet none seem to be able to explain how. 
Even more interesting is the fact that recently in Russia, a very similar aluminium artifact has been discovered embedded in a lump of coal. Lighting the fire during a cold winter evening, a resident of Vladivostok found a rail-shaped piece of metal embedded in one of the pieces of coal. Mesmerized by his discovery, the responsible citizen decided to seek help from scientists of Primary Region. After the metal object was studied by the leading experts the man was shocked to learn about the assumed age of his discovery. The metal detail was dated at 300 million years old, and the scientists suggest that it was not created by nature but was rather manufactured by an intelligent force. This fragment has been found to be made of a similar composition to the Wedge of Aird. Are these artifacts proof of visitation by aliens to our planet? Or maybe revealing of our own advanced history? Hopefully one day their mysterious origins will be understood. President Putin recently visited one of the most mysterious places on Earth the ruins of the ancient town of Arkheim. Historians, archaeologists, and UFOologists have spent many years trying to unravel the secrets of this place. Which nation was living in Arkheim more than 40 centuries ago? How did people of such ancient civilization manage to accomplish the incredible technological progress on Earth there? The Arkheim Valley was supposed to be flooded in 1987. Local authorities were intending to create a water reservoir there to irrigate drought-prone agriculture. However, scientists found strange ancient circles in the center of the valley. Authorities gave archaeologists 12 months to explore the area. Scientists were shocked at what they discovered. However, it is not the unusual earthworks that have attracted investigators, but rather what was recently discovered beneath. A discovery which has seen several renowned alien investigators rushing to this remote and forgotten slice of the Russian landscape in search of the undeniable proof that we are not alone. Researcher Maria Makarova and her team were able to unearth a remarkably well-preserved skeleton in the ground beneath the site. However, it soon became evident that this was no normal skeleton. And although the research team have attempted to disagree with the clear possibility of it not actually being human remains, choosing to suspect that the skeleton somehow belonged to a woman from the Sarmati tribe, which lived in what is now Ukraine, southern Russia, and Kazakhstan about 2,000 years ago. It unfortunately appears that this is an attempt to discredit the real possible value of these remains. This being a logical move by all professional researchers funded by an academia, which would not appreciate such honest and clearly forgivable assumptions based on current evidence being publicly disclosed. For example, firstly, the Sarmatia tribe may have practiced head binding. However, this practice is largely believed to have been located in other parts of the world, and the lack of any additional finds within the tribe supporting this assumption would seem this is a deceptive conclusion to arrive at. Additionally, when head binding was undertaken, unmistakable evidence of such is left upon the skull. Deformed cranial napping, the stitching of the skull will not appear as normal, yet, alas, the stitching will always be present and easily identifiable. Though astonishingly, this skull clearly shows no evidence of binding on the photographs. What's more, and perhaps more pressing, is the lack of any cranial stitching visible whatsoever. This stitching of the skull plates is part of human growth. We all have them, yet this skeleton does not. What do you think regarding the find? An abnormal tribe member buried beneath an extremely ancient, mysterious site? Or something else entirely?